Hey, it's your Open Source Advocate and I'm back with another video and today I wanted to talk about migrating everything. It is just one of those things that I've been thinking about doing for a long time and it's a topic that comes up a lot in the questions and the comments, especially when I'm doing all these self-hosted type applications. I totally understand why you're asking these questions and for me it's always been kind of uh, well I've got it running I don't know about migrating and now I'm trying to migrate everything so I wanted to tell you a little bit about the experience that I've had over the last five or six days in trying to migrate all of my stuff from these big Dell PowerEdge servers that I've been using that are that are power hogs essentially to uh, some equipment that's much less power hungry and hoping to get the same or similar performance out of them. So I kind of want to start with where was I at? I'm showing you my webmin for one of my new servers right now. And you can see it's only using 7% CPU, about 50% of the RAM, which I think it's got 64 gigs of RAM in it. And, you know, very little of anything else down here. You can see on these charts, you know, it's not, not using a ton of anything right now. There's kind of some network activity that happens here and there, some disk IO, of course but I kind of want to start at the beginning. So I have these Dell PowerEdge servers that I've used for several years now and you've seen me spin up different virtual machines and containers and everything else on these servers um, and I've migrated most of them so my, my initial run at this was okay I'll install Proxmox on my new uh, mini PC that's got some some decent power to it and on I bought a 2013 Mac Pro if you're not familiar with that that's the one that everybody said was the trash can Mac Pro but I got it completely spec'd out it was super inexpensive and it still runs like a beast for running something like Linux which is great um, and then I got some external hard drive uh, bays that have been connecting up to these things to to be able to put in a lot of storage and, and use them for that and I started migrating. I started learning, okay, how do I create a cluster in Proxmox? So I did that. Um, not, not hard, really. Uh, I don't want to go into it in this video, but it's not hard. Um, and then once I created those clusters, I was like, okay, I had actually, I had three things in this cluster. Um, and this was the, this one is the machine over here that is the Trash Can Mac Pro. And I said, okay, well, let's migrate some stuff over to it. So I started migrating these things. The problem is when you migrate something on Proxmox, you need to comprehend that it will not be in two places anymore. When you migrate it, when you use their migration tools, so like right here where it says migrate, when I do this, it says, hey, where do you, what node do you want to move it to? And if you have more than one, you'll have more than one in the list, of course. Um, and then if, if it's running, they give you this option for what storage do you want to use? If, if the VM or the container is running, they'll let you pick the storage. If you have it stopped for some reason, they don't let you pick the storage and it just tries to move it to whatever, whatever it wants to this it's weird to me but um, yeah so it, it, it's really easy though you select those two things and hit migrate and it'll start going um, the problem being when I hit migrate for all these things they don't they they literally move from here to here there is no I have both systems in both places it's it's a I moved it from here to here and it's running over here now the problem was I wasn't as I started moving things, initially it was great, but then as I started moving more things, I started seeing performance problems, and it's really not anything with the CPU or the power of the actual server itself. If I click here and go to summary, I mean, you can see there's almost nothing being done on the CPU. The RAM's not even near half yet. Um, I've got a ton of storage connected to this thing, so that's really what I'm using. I mean, you can see the, the history graphs. I mean, not, not a ton going on. Like, it's not like it's just maxed out or anything, but it just for whatever reason has not been performing well from a connectivity standpoint. I don't think it's the network card either. I've been doing some testing on that stuff. So I think it's the way I had to install Proxmox. Um, normally I grab a Proxmox ISO, just install it like I would any other ISO. But for whatever reason, the Proxmox VE 8.1 ISO would not run and start the installer. It would get like kind of up to the point you could run the installer, but when you try to start the installer, it would freak out and have some kind of error and I looked it up and lots of people were having this problem and it seemed to be an issue with the ISO. So I said, oh, you can work around it. Just install Debian 12 Bookworm, then use these instructions to install Proxmox on top of that. Okay, I did that, except it's just not working great. Um, and I did that on both systems, the mini PC and this one. I, I took the mini PC back out of the cluster and I've reworked that. So I'm, I'm kind of reworking everything that I'm running 
here. Um, so you can see I've got a ton of containers that I've already turned off because I've migrated them. I've actually migrated this one. I'm leaving it on because I'm using it for a reference uh, container right now. I have not migrated my pie hole stuff yet. I need to have some other things set up. But my goal is to get everything off of that Mac, that Mac Pro, uh, and then I will reformat it in the same way that I've done the mini PC. So what I did with the mini PC, I just really quickly want to say thank you so very much to my patrons over at Patreon. I just cannot tell you how much it means to me that you guys support me every month. It is just such an incredible feeling. It is such an incredible thing to know that you appreciate the content, that you appreciate what I'm giving to you, to, that you appreciate open source, and, and that you love open source like I do. I, I just it, it means so much to me that you want to support that. Thank you so very much from the bottom of my heart. And to the folks who just do buy me a coffee, I've got that link down in the description too. Man, I it just, again, it makes me so happy every time I see one of those come through. It really brightens up my day. It just makes me feel good to know that somebody appreciated, uh, again, what I'm doing and, and the content that I'm giving. Um, to the guys who comment and just say thank you, man, I can't, I can't tell you. It just makes me so happy. If you haven't already done it, please go click on that thumbs up. It lets other people know this video was good and that you like it and they should watch it. And also click on that subscribe button while you're at it. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you'll know when other videos come out because I've got some incredible open source software coming out for you guys this year. Hope you'll be with me for it. Thank you again. Now let's get started. Um, I'll jump back over here to Webmin. Uh, I installed Ubuntu 2204 and actually I'll go here. So I've got a Pi KVM that I bought, a Pi KVM Mini because I wanted to see how it worked. So I'm gonna open up the KVM, we'll see if it'll let me in. Um, it's, it's, it's got a desktop on, yeah. So I, I literally installed Ubuntu 2004, 20, uh, 2204 desktop on this thing. So uh, I can log in here. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a straight up desktop. So this is just Pi KVM. So I've got a KVM thing connected to the Raspberry Pi and I'm remoting to that so I can do a lot of stuff and you get a lot of control out of this. Uh, I set up Ubuntu 2204. I could have done it as a server. I just wasn't feeling super confident in doing it as a server off the bat. I wanted to have a desktop so I could set a few things that are a little bit easier through the GUI in my opinion right now. I'm very used to Ubuntu server. Um, I was just a little bit nervous about trying this route. I may go back and, and redo this at some point, but it's been a lot of work, so I don't know. I may just, it, it's not, the desktop's not hurting it. I'm not using it for anything 99.999% of the time, but um, it's there if I want it. What I did do was go install some uh, a webmin on top of that server, and it's very webmin is super low resource. I have a video from way back on this. It's a really awesome project if you've never looked at it. If you're if you're a server admin and you're like, man, I use Windows, I'm, I'm a Windows user, and you like seeing the graphical user interface for doing things, then webmin is is an awesome little tool. Um, you've got all kinds of stuff here. So like, if you need to go and mess with your hard drives, you can go to your hardware section over here, and you can go to your partitions and local hard drives. And you can click on your hard drive and you can see your partitions and you can take actions. You can do all kinds of things just by clicking through the user interface. Of course, you've got that dashboard. Um, you've got all kinds of different things. And then it tells you, hey, if there's updates available, it'll give you notifications. You can run the updates from right here in the web user interface. I mean, just really super useful, actually. And, and I really enjoy using Webmin. It gives you some nice statistics, some real quick graphical user interface type statistics and information, which is awesome. Tells you all about your system, lets you know what's going on with it, and really you can do a ton from Webmin. So really and truly, you don't. And this runs in a web browser. It, it just runs a, a web browser application that you install through um, an, an apt package, essentially, uh, and then it, it's running. So every time your system starts up, this is running, and you can access it. Um, I really like Webmin, so kind of got that running. And the next thing I did was, and Scotty over at Scottabyte is going to love this because. I went and watched his videos to set up Incus. Now, if you don't know what Incus is, this is basically the newer version of LXD. The same guys that started with LXD or LexD. Um, so in Proxmox, they have LexC or LXC containers. Well, LXD is kind of the next thing up from that. Um, and it's it's a Ubuntu thing now for some reason. It's, it's kind of Ubuntu kind of said we're taking it back over. So the guys that were working on that from the open source side said, okay, we're gonna split off, we're gonna do our own thing. They call it Incus. Um, it's a type of cloud, so uh, because it's a type of cloud, they named it that. So I went and installed uh, Incus on this server uh, here, and I, I kind of watched Scotty's videos. I ran through it. I learned about the command line stuff first, so I'll kind of show you what's going on here. Um, I'm, I'm logged into my Incus server here. Uh, this is the main host server that we're talking about. So if I do like an Incus list, you'll see all the, all the containers that I've got running already on this thing. Um, tons of them 
So I've got Dashy, and actually Dashy, if you see this little bridge, each one of these bridges is a Docker container that's got the bridge going out. So I created a bridge network following against Scott's tutorial. Awesome, awesome tutorial. If you've never set this up and you're interested after this video, I will have them linked in the description for the two that I followed out of the gate. And then I had a third one that I went and watched on how to create your own snapshot because that made it way faster for me to do the things I was doing and not have to repeat a bunch of steps. And I'll talk about that in a minute here as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you see this, I've got some my Valorian game, I've got it set up, I've got Vault Warden set up, I migrated over super smooth, and I want to talk about the migration process for each of these things as well, because there's some that were great, and there's some that I'm like, ugh, I have to start over, and I want to kind of be upfront with you guys about which ones those are that I found, because I had trouble with it. Um, but the ones that have been super easy, I want you to know about too, so that you'll be confident in trying to get out there and use it. So these are the containers that I'm running so far. So you can see all the stuff that I'm running, and actually this is a lot of containers running on this one. I've got a few running on the on the Vault Warden for that application. Valoran has a couple running on it. Um, I've got the, these are the apps that I've made for my family to use. Uh, we've got Wacamole running on this one, and it runs great. Moving it over was super easy. Had to go change a couple things in a configuration file um, and a couple things on Authentic, so it would let me get my Authentic stuff going on. Uh, LX Console, and I'm I'm going to show you that in a minute. This is the graphical user interface for Incus. Uh, it's really great and it's open source and it's awesome. And again, Scotty has a great video on getting it set up and running inside of a container so that you're able to access all of your stuff and do these things through a user interface if you want to. Um, same thing here where we've got this main proxy. This is my web proxy now. I had to move everything over from the old proxy. Um, and this is uh, using Nginx Proxy Manager still. So just moving things over and getting things migrated as I go. And then we've got Mesh Central and we've got uh, Rust Desk, which actually runs a couple of things inside of the Rust Desk as well. So Mesh Central, I'm still working on. I'm still trying to get it to come back up and have all the settings and everything like I wanted. Um, this is one of those ones that's not migrating super easily, unfortunately, but uh, I've got my hopes up that I can get it to work. So I'll let you know. So as we go through all of that, there's a ton going on here and I just kind of want to let you know like where we're headed. So I'm headed from here, which is running on, on this, this Proxmox server here. I'm trying to migrate all of the stuff that's on here over. Now, I know this doesn't look like much, but some of these containers are running two or three different Docker images and Docker containers. These, this Docker testing I use for all the videos that I make for you guys to learn how to do things. This is my Docker server too. It probably runs about 15 different applications that I'm trying to move probably about 10 of those over and the other five I, I kind of just turned on and off as I needed to and just used for, for different things. So this is a lot of stuff for me to migrate again and really by hand. The one thing about Proxmox was this migration was super easy. It was really click it, right click it, hit migrate, make sure it's running, and then pick where you, which node you want it to go to and which storage you want it to go to, and it does the thing, right? There, there was a little bit of complexity like with Nextcloud because Nextcloud has an attached mounted volume that was separate from where Nextcloud was installed that I needed to get set up so that it would have all my data that I backed up, right? So I wanted to get everything set back up for Nextcloud. And it worked, but it wasn't staying up and running over here, so I've got to run through that whole migration again. Um, same thing for my Jellyfin and everything like that. It's still running up here on Aria. Um, Jellyfin and you know Jacket and Sonar and Radar and all those things that help me you know keep my library in order. I just I have a mounted external storage of like eight terabytes for that stuff that I have to figure out, okay, I've got to move that. It's all on a ZFS pool. I've got, I've got to get it migrated first. Um, I, I, I'm not a super confident person with ZFS, so I'm kind of nervous about trying to do something and breaking everything and losing all my media. Um, I do have it backed up, luckily, to a, a really big hard drive, so I can pull it back if I want, if I have to, but I'd really love to just be able to migrate that entire enclosure because it's a four drive enclosure that I've got already in that ZFS pool. I just, you know, unplug it from one place, plug it into another place, ZFS import, I'm hoping, and see if it shows up, but uh, that's going to take a little bit of work as well. So, what we're doing is trying to migrate all of these things over to this new system. And uh, this is Webmin, and this is the Incus, um, this is the LX console, the graphical user interface for Incus. So I'm gonna zoom this up a little bit so you can see it, but when I first log in, I'm here at the servers. You can just minimize this and just see the icons if you want to, and then it'll grow if you need it to, but you can also just leave it out there. Uh, but here's my one server so far. Now you can add more servers, 
once it's time and again Scott has an incredible video I mean step by step by step it was like bam 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 I mean I had it knocked out in no time which was great because it made it super fast to get this up and running and I'm a total noob when it comes to doing LX stuff from the command line or in this case Inca stuff from the command line and his videos are so informative on this um, just super useful so again if you're if you're interested after you see this stuff and you're interested in getting this running I highly highly recommend you go out and look at it so the one thing I like about this look at this great interface it shows you you've got nine containers 100% are running so if I had one that wasn't running it would tell me like hey there you've got nine but you only have so many running right so many percentage running I don't have any virtual machines yet but I will have virtual machines at some point um, again no clusters I'm not, I'm not setting up a cluster this time I'm just gonna do things separate and access them from here it's just my preferred way um, 61 gigs of memory you can see it's already a little bit over half you know that's that's getting up there but again unused memory is wasted memory so as I go I kind of keep an eye on how high that's getting it just helps me make sure that I'm keeping track of what I'm doing I've got two images the, the first image is the image I pulled down originally which is a Ubuntu 2204 uh, server image the second image is one that I used again Scott's video to go and modify a container so I created a container out of that original image I added docker to it I added git wget curl um, open SSH server you know a few things that don't come on those images they are very bare bones images of Ubuntu or whatever server you want to get CentOS or whatever you're going to use but I went and added the things that I want to have every single time I know I always want git wget curl docker and docker compose and open SSH server running so I can SSH over to it and then I created my user account um, so it, it's always got my user account ready to go I don't have to go and do all that stuff every single time it makes it super fast to spin up another server another container server and just get going so that's the second image that I have there so I'll go show you in the images list here um, um, yeah so I've got this Ubuntu 2204 image and you can see this is the original image that I pulled down Oop, there it goes it switched on me okay and then this is the one that I created and yeah that's really it it's it's pretty pretty simple um, you know I, I don't know why this keeps switching it's, it's sorting by something there but yeah I mean these are these are the images that I've got and this is the only two images that I'm using so if we go over here if we go back to the dashboard um, you can let me see is this the dashboard will this take me to it I don't think so no it takes me out but if you click on your server um, once you click into your server you've got your instances over here that you can get to but you can also click here to get to them it's up to you how you do it so you go in here and I can see all of my instances that's going on now usually I don't have this quite so zoomed in it looks a little bit cleaner when it's like this but you can see all of your IP addresses so I've got my private IP addresses in here things like that and then I've got all my IPv6 addresses in here I can see what's going on here with the memory so how much is this one using it's using two gigs um, this is my dashi server so it's got dashi running and it's got about five other different docker applications running on it so that's why it's using a, a little bit more memory than the others but then you can also look at like the ram disk like how much swap is it using um, the status is running and then i can stop this container from here okay i can i can it says edit but i think this is really stop and then you've also got delete so I could delete that container so you want to be a little careful you know you don't want to click the delete button by accident but it's there and the same thing here so I can look at all these and 300 something megabytes of RAM 1.2 gigs of RAM for Valoran which isn't surprising it's a pretty badass game um, almost a gig of RAM here uh, for my two applications you know 70 700 megabytes 400 megabytes most of these are pretty small on RAM usage which is great uh, considering what they're running and things so so yeah you've got a lot of really great stuff in here but once you get to here you can even go in and say okay I'm gonna click into dashi you get into dashi and look at this you've got all of this information about the different interfaces that you've got on the system you can keep scrolling down you can see a little bit more information about it you can see like what's going on with it I mean just such great information in this interface but then I'm gonna jump over here to the console so you've got configuration if you want to if you want to see the configuration or edit the configuration of it you can do that so you've got all these different options and this is what you get whenever you create a new uh, container as well so I'll show you real quick in a minute how to create a new container again Scott's got videos all this stuff that's very in-depth so I'm going pretty quick on the devices side you can see your disk your GPU network proxy all this information right so this is really great stuff 
Over here, you've got actions that you can take on these different containers. So you've got all kinds of really cool stuff over here as far as things you can do. Of course, you can stop it and start it again. But then you get to the console and the exec here. So either one of these. So I'm just going to start up the exec first. Um, so I'm just going to say start exec. And it's going to say, hey, this has a certificate. You might want to go and actually get this certificate and fix it. So I have to click here to accept the certificate. It's just going to warn me because it's a self-signed certificate. That's all. It's my server, so I've got to say, yeah, it's fine. It's going to go there, and it's going to be like, nothing shows up. It's okay. Come back here and just click on dismiss, and then click on start again, and you'll see now it starts up. It's just saying like, hey, I didn't recognize that certificate. You might want to be a little careful. So this logs me in. When you do the exec, it logs me in as root. So I can just do an ls, and I can do a cd ls, and there's nothing there, okay? If I do ls slash home, you'll see that I have a Brian account and the Ubuntu account. That's kind of the default account that comes with it. I could go in and just get rid of that one. But that's your exec uh, command line here. So pretty useful, but you can stop that one. Then we can go to the console and we can log in. And this one, you see it's going to say, hey, we see that you're here. This is Brian and you're inside of Docker and I can do an LS. And you can see all the things that I'm running here. So if I zoom this up, it gets a little bit bigger. It's probably a little easier to see, but not so great on the screen. Uh, but we've got Authentic, Dashy, Homebox, Mesh Central, Navidrome, Remotely, and Trillium Notes. Now, Mesh Central is not the one that I'm running for a different spot. This is just, I brought it over, but I haven't started it up or anything yet. Uh, but all the rest of these are actually running and, and up and going. So this is what I'm using. So Mesh Central is the only one. So one, two, three, four, five, six different uh, things that I'm running on this thing. And it's it's really super, super useful to have this kind of control inside of the browser because I go to one place and I can do anything I need to do on these different containers. So it's really great. If we go back to our instances, we can just see what we're doing. It, see, it jumps me out of the console when I do that. And again, I can click into any of these things and see what I'm doing as far as what's going on with these things, which is kind of great. So the ones that say Ubuntu, you can see that I created those straight from the Ubuntu thing. Uh, these ones that have the little dash I created from my image. So I created a snap, I created an image from, uh, from the one that I updated just to get it to where I wanted it so I wouldn't have to keep doing it over and over and over. Now there's a lot of other stuff in here that you can use. You can set up storage pools. You can do all kinds of things. And you can do all this stuff from the CLI as well for Incas. I'm going to go over here and say add an instance. I, I know I want to create an instance, but we'll just call this test. And I'm going to give it a description. This is a test. And then right here where it says what type is it? Container or virtual machine. So you can choose. And then I'm going to say what image do I want? So I've got that I've got my Ubuntu and then I've got that generic Ubuntu version. I'm going to use mine with a Docker CE. And then I went through Scott's video again and created a bridge profile, which allows me to bridge the network for the container out to the network card of my host device. So the important step you want to make sure you do. Um, this, there's nothing uh, I need to pick here, but this is something that deals with AWS stuff. So nothing for me, nothing and nothing. But down here, you've got some really good things. So do I want this to auto start whenever I start the server? Yes, so I'm gonna set this to true. Uh, you've got all kinds of different things you can do here. You can set up CPU limits, memory limits, all kinds of stuff, CPU max, all, all kinds of things. So super useful tools there as well. Uh, migration, I'm not really sure what this is for unless you've got something like in a cluster probably. Um, NVIDIA, I'm guessing if you have an NVIDIA pass-through for GPU, you could do some settings on that here. Uh, you have other for a few other settings here. You've got raw, so kind of things that you can do as far as what, what's available on the raw side. Uh, kind of scripting, I think, is what this is. Security, this is an important one, and one of the things that I set is this nesting is true because I'm using Docker inside of the containers. Um, the privileged true, I haven't had to do yet, but it's there. So if you ever need to run one as a privileged user, you may need that as well. So worth knowing that it's there. There you go. So we've got everything set that I want. I'm going to hit submit. It's going to start creating a new one right down here at the bottom. And it was very fast. It's already created it. Now I just have to click on the little start button here. It'll start that container. Uh, we'll give it a second. You can see it starts putting in information when it sees that it's starting up. It'll give us some IP information in these columns here in just a few seconds. And uh, that thing will be up and running. So there's our IPv6, probably another five or six seconds. It'll show us the IPv4 stuff coming in as well. There it is. So I get my IPv4 address and I get a couple of uh, internal IP addresses as well. So I can use these things to get out there and actually connect to these servers and do the work that I need to do. 
But again, I can do that from inside the web user interface if I want to by just jumping over into the instance and going over to that console or the exec command line and, and running stuff that way. Um, you can do it also from the command line in the shell, which is pretty easy with Incus. Um, so if I just clear that out and just do that command again, you'll see I've got that test one now. So I could just do Incus shell test. And now I'm inside of that test as the root user. Now, I may not want to be the root user, but I can do su dash, like space dash, and then space Brian, and that turns me into the Brian user on that machine, and I can do all the things that I would want to do. I can do Docker PS, which there's nothing running right now, but I do have Docker set up and installed and ready to go, so I could get things up and going really fast. All right, that's the overview of the tools that I'm using to kind of migrate things from one place to another for now. It's not that I don't like Proxmox, but I think Proxmox is absolutely incredible, powerful software. Um, but for me right now, it is not working on the hardware that I have. So for me, I need a tool that's gonna work on the hardware that I have and straight Ubuntu and then adding some stuff on top of it is not super difficult. Uh, going Debian and adding PVE on top of it didn't work out great for me. So I'm trying a different route and I, I just wanted to talk about what I'm doing and, and where we're headed with that. You can exit from that and then exit again and then we're back to the server here. So I want to go back over. I want to come over here and kind of talk about the things that I'm moving. So I do have a new proxy and uh, it's down here and it's just called main proxy uh, right here. So if we go over to it, uh, 67. All right, yeah, so I've got 11 hosts already set up inside of Nginx Proxy Manager. Um, so yeah, uh, my, my Wacamole server, moving that over was actually really not too bad. And um, really it was just copy the entire folder that I have inside of Docker, because I have everything inside of that folder. So I have a Docker slash Wacamole folder, copied it over, just SCP'd it right over to the new server, jumped into it, had to make a couple of configuration changes real quick and then started it up. And I mean, man, it was up and running in no time. It was great. Um, authentic, same thing. I just moved everything over and uh, went in and changed, you know, just, just I double checked the compose file to make sure there's nothing, re you know, referencing the specific IP that it used to be at or anything like that. And, and as long as everything looks good as, you know, where the volumes are that it's looking for, things like that, I leave it and I just start it up and authentic start up like it was nothing and it still had all of our accounts, everything set up in it, which was great. Um, Dashy, same thing, just moved over the whole Dashy folder. It had all of my icons, it had all of my configs already done, so everything's up to date there. But I have to go into Dashy itself and change all of these IP addresses because they're new IP addresses for a lot of these things. Uh, Matrix is one that did not go super great. Um, matrix unfortunately we've been using it me and just my family i have my own server it's a dendrite server i tried to move everything over together but it, it just didn't like that it started up but it's like it doesn't know who i am it doesn't know who anybody is it, it even getting it to come up and run correctly with the route and everything like that was not working great so um yeah i i just I was a little bit sad about that. I, I moved it to a VPS out on DigitalOcean, uh, but yeah, it, it was just not functioning the way that I wanted it to. Uh, so I had to kind of start over. Luckily, we just we just use it literally for you know communicating with each other and my family. There was nothing where I was like, oh man, I don't want to lose all of that chat conversation or oh, I, you know, so many pictures I should have downloaded. Nothing like that. Luckily, so we we just use it for internal communication in my family. I like it; it's private. It keeps us off of the other platforms, which is great. But it it, it definitely did not migrate well. Um, I tried to look and find are there any instructions on how to make this thing migrate, and most of it said, "Yeah, we didn't really plan in migration, so not great." Um, there's probably some ways to do it, but I, I didn't find it off the off the bat there. Um, Home Assistant definitely is is there for me, and uh, it it just runs great. I didn't have to migrate it because it's on its own machine. Uh, Mesh Central I'm working on. I don't have it up and running yet, but I'm working on it. I'm hoping it'll come up soon so that I can get everything just right back where it was. Um, this is my little home box server. It moved over. Everything worked like a charm. I just literally same thing. Copied everything over and it worked great. Navidrome. I had to copy over all my music uh, to a new folder. 
um, just named it the same thing, gave it the same path basically that I had on the original server, and then just copied over all the stuff in Docker so that it was referencing the correct path and, and the location. If I had had to change it, all I had to do was change the path on the Docker Compose file and start it up and it should have been fine. But uh, yeah, it came up just fine, found every piece of music, all of the cover art and all of my, all of my playlists, which was great. So super, super happy with that one. Uh, remotely, it moved fine. I didn't have any problem with it. Um, so, so yeah, that one came up and started running like it was no big deal. Um, Trillium Notes, uh, same thing. I moved it, I got it up and running, and I pointed my clients at it, and it worked like it was no big deal. It just, just references those notes and syncs them, so it was great. Didn't, didn't have any problem with that. Uh, Vault Warden, also super smooth. I was really nervous about Vault Warden because I make my backups and I've got those config files, but I didn't see anybody who said, here's how you restore those backups. Um, so yeah, that, that's a, that one, it was, a, again, just grab that entire folder from your Docker. Make sure that you're keeping everything inside of that Vault Warden folder and copied it over, man, and it was it was it was up and running. It was great. Um, so Vault Warden has done an amazing job on the way that they've built that out. Bit Warden and Vault Warden both just by following along with what they're doing. So yeah, I've 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 moved over a lot of stuff already. I'm super excited that it's going well. It's definitely taking time because I'm doing them one at a time. I'm making sure that they're coming up and running. I'm, so yeah, this is my my process so far for migrating but i'm pretty happy with it and uh, i i really cannot tell you how great um this tool is I'm, I'm just so excited and it's incas is very young um it's a pretty pretty new product they really split off very recently but they took something that's been there for a while they took lex d and they split it off and started started making it you know their own thing so it's going really well and it seems very so far very stable cross my fingers that it'll stay that way but yeah this is these tools are incredible um again i'm going to link you to scott's videos super super useful videos you, you want to sit down go through it with him step by step and you will just be so happy with how easy it is to actually get that stuff done he makes it so clear and so simple um, to one, set up Incus on, on Ubuntu, which is which is really kind of this, you know, just getting it where you can do the command line stuff. Um, he gives you some really great information on the commands that you can use. Um, Incus image list. Yeah, so this will show you the different images that you've got. And this is like super, super great. Um, he gives you some really great commands for how to how to create a container out of these images. They're worth your time. I think if you're spinning up a home lab, if you're spinning up a business, again, incredible tooling. This is incredible tooling for anything you're trying to do. I mean, just think about how much you could do with something like this and where you say, I want to see my servers. I've got one server. Look at the space on this screen, man. I feel like I could add a ton of servers. I can jump into my server and start doing something. And if you name those servers in a smart way, it's going to be so useful. And then having this stuff set up on a VPN like Netbird is going to be extremely useful. So I may go through a video where we're setting up some of this stuff and kind of setting it up on the VPN for a business and getting those things kind of running on that. Um, I don't want to migrate the client that I've got right now. They are running really well right now. Again, knocking on wood that stays going because I don't want to mess with that system. Uh, I do the updates. I do the upgrades. I do all the security patches. Uh, but other than that, I leave it alone. I let it run. It runs great. Um, Proxmox is a champ, I'm telling you right now. But for my home use, this was definitely not the, the choice that I could stay with for now. So I'll let you know how this goes. I'll follow up. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I've got some more really great stuff coming for you. I'm working on a few different videos. Uh, time has just been precious lately. But I did want to tell you about this whole thing I've been going through for the last five or six days because it is... I'm a planner. I'm not somebody who just does something kind of willy-nilly. Um, even just to buy this hardware. Like, I've been thinking about buying this hardware. For, I've been saving up again for about almost a year to get some of this lower-powered hardware and the hard drives that I wanted to go with it. Um, I finally kind of pulled that trigger and did it. And now I'm trying to get things migrated over. I'm excited to get some of these higher power servers turned off. I've got one completely turned off, which is great. I'd like to get the second one completely turned off and then I've got a true NAS server that I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with yet but it runs really well so I don't want to mess with it either um, until I'm until I'm really really sure I'm ready but hope you enjoyed this if you did like subscribe tell your friends about it so they can come along the open source journey with us and I'll talk to you next time